Hey everyone, this is Dutch Mogul, and today I'm going to teach you to play around with 3D Builder to put together a modular Viking. 3D Builder is a free program, but you're going to need to be operating on Windows 10 to run it. Go ahead and download that, and then open the 3MF file, and it should display something like this. By right-clicking on the parts you'd like to select, you can manipulate them, moving them on the X, Y, and Z axis by either using the arrow keys or dragging them by a cursor. For this video, we're going to remove the original head and swap it with a beardier variant. As you can see, this is pretty simple, uh, but the, uh, the head is already positioned in a place where it can just be moved to the left and right and, and click right into the body. You'll actually find a clicking point, which just sort of naturally happens when you reach the center of the model, which is pretty great for aligning parts like this. Okay, next up, why don't we give this guy a helmet? We can do that by selecting the helmet, and then we're going to drag it over to his head. As before, the helmet should click right into place, right when it's in the center of the head, which is going to be really helpful. As I look at this, I'm feeling like I want it to be a little shorter, so why don't we show you how to manipulate the size and dimensions. The third option over on the little navigation bar at the very bottom will allow you to manipulate the scale. Uh, when you select that, little nodes will appear, little arrow nodes, that will allow you to change the X, Y, and Z dimensions making it shorter, wider, whatever you need. Uh, if you grab the little white nodes at the corners, and you can, you can stretch the entire thing at once. Let's go ahead and add the arms we want next. Now, for, the, for, for that, you're going to want to grab whichever arm you want to start with and just drag it over to an approximate position where you're going to want it. Now here, we're dragging multiple parts at once because the, the, the arm and the weapon are two separate parts. So just hold down shift as you select each one, and then you can move them as one piece. Uh, another thing you might have noticed is that I use the center view function. You can do this by going up to view at the top there and then center view. This will focus in on whatever part you have selected, and it's really helpful because it kind of saves time navigating. Now basic navigation, you can hold down the middle mouse button to kind of drag drag around left and right, up and down, or hold down the right mouse button, or left, excuse me, uh, to kind of get a rotating view. As you can see, I'm kind of keeping this arm in the position it's in. I'm just moving it up and down, forward and backward to kind of get it situated in the right point. Uh, I'll go into rotation for the left arm. That looks about right to me. Okay, now we're going to grab the left arm, and we're going to drag it over to the position where it's supposed to be here, uh, or at least close to. Now, as you can see, this is a right arm, but we're going to go ahead and show you how to mirror that. The mirror function is super handy, and it actually ends up meaning that you only need to design about half the parts you need, especially when it comes to limbs and things like that for modular parts. So to mirror your objects, just go to the object uh, tab at the very top and then hit mirror and it'll flip it around. Now that we've got the knife arm in position, go ahead and select the second option over from movement on the uh, navigation bar at the very bottom. And that'll allow you to use the cursors to spin the object around, turn it in, 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 in whatever way you're gonna need. I'm gonna go ahead and move the hand so it's down, so the knife is in a little more dynamic position, uh, kind of juxtaposed to the sword. As you can see here, uh, rather than use the cursors or arrows, I'm actually using a third method to move the object around. You can use a little hand to grab it when you're kind of focused over it, and you can drag it in different directions. And that'll work in the regular transformation, the regular movement version, or even while it's in the rotation mode. Uh, 
Deleting parts you're not using can make the whole process go a lot smoother. Just uh, select everything you're not going to use, and when it's all selected together, holding down shift and selecting each part, hit the delete key. Next up, to add a little extra detail, we're going to select the sort of accoutrement down at the bottom there, the knife and belt pouch, and we're going to move them into position. Here I'm using the scale function to drag one facet of the knife so that it sort of sets into his body. This will make the uh, print a little more stable in that area. Here I'm taking the pouch and sort of merging it a little bit with the knife so that that's going to be more stable when the print uh, time comes around as well. This also may cut down on necessary supports. We've only got one pouch here, but we want to add a second. You can do standard uh, uh, control C, control V shortcuts to copy and then paste an item. And then here I'm also going to mirror this one just so that we get a little, uh, little bit of difference to it. When it comes to moving objects around like this, so much of it really just has to pass the eyeball test. So as you're doing it, you'll kind of find a comfort level. Selecting the head and helmet together, again, holding down shift while you do so. Uh, you're going to go ahead and you know, rotate it around, give it a little more personality than just that kind of standard, straightforward-looking position, and uh, kind of do that to taste. Using the select all function from the right navigation bar there, you can select everything that's in the field. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of grab him and rotate him so that his kind of front facing position is just a little staggered. Uh, it doesn't really matter, it's not necessary. I just, I just like to do it for render purposes. Can be a good idea to settle your model. Now the, the object has like flat feet at the very bottom so all you have to do is select everything and then go to object and hit the settle function and he should drop to the plate. Now that we know he's on the plate and his z-axis is, uh, is stable we're going to go ahead and go to the navigation bar at the very bottom and click on his x and y position and enter zero and that'll put him right in the middle of where the print plate would be. 
Next up, we're going to save our progress, and you can really do this at any time. But just go ahead and do Save As, and you can save as an STL. That's the most commonly used uh, printing format, and put that wherever you're going to need it. Uh, when you're doing so, uh, you've got a little prompt saying, are you sure? And yeah, you can just say yes. You can even turn that off. Once you have everything saved as one file, you're going to want to select all the parts and use the merge function under the edit tab at the top. That'll create it all into one object that can no longer be manipulated in parts. Now this might create some sort of decimation as you're seeing, but you can go to uh, edit again and use the smooth function and just use that on the first setting. Uh, it goes from one to five and it'll sort of smooth out those little imperfections that were created and bring it back to the way it was. And there you have it. You now have your own Viking model that's ready to export to be printed. We printed ours on a Form 2 and then painted. I painted him without priming uh, using uh, Reaper paints and mounted him on a acrylic base. I really like those see-through acrylic bases. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, hope this was useful.